Mika Zibanejad returns to practice, but Artemi Panarin and Philip Hedl are now both dealing with injuries. Plus, the Rangers are back in action tonight against the New York Islanders. All this and much more on today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers. You're locked on the New York Rangers, your daily podcast on the New York Rangers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 906 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. Just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And we are, of course, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So had a little bit of extra time here today. Want to squeeze in one more episode before the Rangers battle the Islanders a little bit later tonight. It's Tuesday morning, getting into the afternoon here as I'm recording this. And uh, want to take an opportunity, like I said, to take a look at uh, what's been going on with the Rangers lately. Recap the last two practices, both Monday and Tuesday. Tuesday's uh, practice session concluded just a short time ago here. Also want to go ahead and do a little bit of a preview for Rangers Islanders tonight. Yes, it's preseason, but obviously we want to see the Rangers get a win. More regulars are going to be in the lineup or so it would seem tonight uh, than we saw on Sunday against the Bruins. And uh, hopefully the Rangers can claim their first win of the preseason and stay healthy while doing it. But we'll start with Monday's practice and just kind of go through everything that happened there and some developing themes in Ranger training camp here. Uh, for starters, got to give credit to Arthur Staple for tweeting out the line combinations, the defense pairings once again for Monday's practice is for group A and group B. The Rangers were basically split into two different groups for that practice and uh, a good amount of, you know, big names in both groups. It wasn't one of those situations where you know, they put all the regulars in one group and all the prospects and minor leaguers in the other group. No, this one was split pretty evenly, but it's for group A. You get a top line left to right, Kreider, Mika, and Lafreniere. We've seen that combination before. And uh, once again, the, the Rangers sticking to their guns of Alexi Lafreniere, uh, getting a whole bunch of time at right wing. In fact, he's basically played exclusively right wing uh, thus far in training camp. And that's also where he was on Sunday night against the Bruins. Uh, Mika and Kreider together. There's no real surprises there. They've, they've pretty much been joined at the hip. Uh, for the last couple of seasons here. I mean, they break them up from time to time, but for the most part, they're always on the same line. I uh, get a second line, and this is how you know that the, the team is divided. But the second line for Group A, left to right, Barclay Goodrow, Nick Bonino, Tyler Pitlick. And that's probably going to be the fourth line on opening night, unless Goodrow's on the third line and VZ is on the fourth line, or there could be somebody in there in place of one of these guys that we're not thinking of or that we don't expect to be there, whether it's, uh, you know, Will Cooley or Brian Offman or one of these other uh, you know, guys that have signed on with the Rangers and Alex Belzeal or Riley Nash. Uh, but for the most part, it seems like that could be the fourth line to start the season. Then you had a third line here uh, where they were rotating guys. It was Offman, Belzeal, Edstrom, and Elson. Uh, the fourth line was Bleed, Lecision, Remp or Rempe, I always forget which one it is. Like, I'm going to have to look that one up. But Remp or Rempe and uh, Henriksen. And then the defense pairings, you had Lingren and Fox. So back to the tried and true combination there. Uh, you also had Gustafson and Schneider. You had Robertson and Hollowell. Uh, you had Hillman and Brouillard. And you also had, at goal, Igor Shesterkin and Dylan Garin. It's also sounding like the two of them uh, will be the two goalies for tonight's game against the Islanders. More on that in just a little bit. But then you had uh, Group B, as far as the line combo combinations, com combos, combinations, call it what you want to call it. Uh, we had a top line of Panarin, Hedl, and Kako from left to right. We also had, and we've seen Hedl, you know, getting some time with Panarin this uh, offseason and in training camp here. Be curious to see. Uh, Panarin's not going to play in tonight's game, and we'll talk about that more in a second as well. Um, but I'll be curious to see once Panarin is able to play in these preseason games, if uh, Philip Hedl gets the first crack play on his line, or if they'll go with Vincent Trocek. That's going to be interesting to find out. Or maybe they put Panarin with Mika Zibanejad. Uh, we saw the two of them together in practice along with Blake Wheeler the other day. So I suppose all options are on the table. I uh, get a second line in Group B, left to right of Cooley, Trocek, and Wheeler. And I, I touched on this just a second ago, and it's kind of a developing theme in camp here. They are giving Will Cooley some looks with some of the more prominent uh, Ranger players. You know, he's getting to play uh, with Trocek and Wheeler. They had him, I believe he was out there with, if I'm not mistaken, it was Cooley, Heedle, and Lafreniere in the game uh, Sunday against the Bruins. And that was the Rangers' top line for that game. So they're giving Cooley some chances. It sounds like... Uh, 
you know, they're, they're at least given an, opp an opportunity to potentially make this team. I still look for him to start with the AHL, but never say never. I mean, Will Cooley, he's getting his chances. And even if they feel that way, that they want to start him in the AHL, it's nice to see that um, he's getting some opportunities here to play with some of the Rangers' big guns, so to speak. Uh, so an interesting line combination there. You also had from left to right, VZ, Nash, and Brodzinski. Uh, and then you had four players rotating on the fourth line here, Berard, Korzak, Sakura, Trevino. As far as defense pairings in Group B, you had Miller and Truba. So again, back to the tried and true combination there. Uh, you also had Mackey and Harper. You had Jones and Clendenning. And you had Scanlon and Emerson. And then the two goalies, uh, Quick and Deming, who obviously played in the Ranger preseason opener against the Bruins. So some interesting notes here. To me, the biggest takeaway, once again, is Will Cooley uh, getting an opportunity to play with some of the Rangers, you know, top players and guys that are certainly going to be out there on opening night. Uh, does that bode well for Cooley's chances as far as making this roster? It certainly can't hurt. And it's nice to know that, you know, he's gained enough respect and um, enough uh, attention from the Ranger coaching staff that he's getting those opportunities. Peter Laviolette the other day uh, during one of his pressers was speaking very, very highly of Will Cooley. So uh, it, it might be, this might be legit here. Will Cooley might be uh, working his way toward carving out a role for himself uh, on the opening night roster. We will see. Again, I, I still think, there's a better chance than not that he starts a season in the AHL, but the door is cracked for Will Cooley, and if he can kick it down, uh, the Rangers have shown in the past, they will give their young guys a chance if they earn it, and I would assume that's still the case, you know, even though there is a new coaching staff here. The other big takeaway from Monday's practice, we all breathe a collective sigh of relief. Mika Zibanejad back on the ice. He was wearing a red non-contact jersey during this uh, practice session. Uh, the fact that he's out there at all, though, seems to bode pretty well for Mika Zibanejad going forward. Uh, sounds like he will not play in this preseason game tonight, but hopefully uh, that's just, you know, the Rangers being cautious. It's not like Mika Zibanejad is one of these guys that's fighting for a roster spot and needs to be out there every second that he can get. He's obviously uh, an elite center in this league, and, you know, they'll they'll throw him back out there when they feel he's ready and uh, when they feel that there's no more injury risk. You know, they, they do still have some time between now and the start of the regular season, but hopefully Mika uh, can get out there for at least a couple of the preseason games. Um and Laviolette, he was asked about Mika, obviously, after the practice. And uh, he said it was good to see Sabanajad out there today. Uh, then he also added, we'll be 100% careful with him. There won't be any push or rush to get him in a preseason game. So, yeah, that pretty much goes to what everything that I just said there. Um, there's no reason to rush it. Uh, Mika Sabanajad is somebody that knows what he's doing. He's a veteran. And uh, obviously... Better to be safe than sorry at this point in the preseason. Still five preseason games to go here uh, before we turn the page to the regular season. Um, I mentioned uh, the, the two groupings. So Group A was out there for an hour, 10.30 to 11.30. Group B was out there from noon to 1. Again, this is all on Monday's practice session. Um, and, and as I mentioned, the big names were divided pretty evenly. And... Yeah, I mean, you had Mika in Group A, Panarin in Group B, you had Fox in Group A, Truba in Group B, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, also of note from Monday's practice, Brent Offman was back out there. Uh, he had been dealing with an upper body injury. Uh, he was not wearing a red jersey or anything like that during practice, so it sounds like Offman, uh, all systems are go. Not sure if he's playing in the game tonight. My understanding is he was going to play on Sunday, and the injury uh, caused him to miss that game. But uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Brian Offman as much as just about any player in this camp. Obviously, high draft pick, put up the crazy numbers in the uh, OHL the last few seasons, and seems to have a ton of upside. And on top of that, a very physical player as well. So I know a lot of Ranger fans, very excited about Brian Offman, and uh, you can definitely count me among you uh, when it comes to that. Uh, there was also an interesting line combination, uh, once again, of Panarin, Hedl, and Kako, and then also Cooley, Trocek, and Wheeler. And this is what Laviola had to say about Will Cooley. And this is what I was talking about earlier in the episode. Didn't have the quote, found it here. Uh, Laviola, this is what he had to say on Cooley. He's certainly a player that's on an upward traje trajectory. He can skate, he can hit. Last year, he proved that he can win a fight once in a while, and he has good hockey sense and good hands to be able to score goals. And yet Cooley played four games with the Rangers last season and just a quick cup of coffee with the team. But overall, I think he did well in limited ice time, uh, ended up in two fights, uh, certainly seems ready and willing and able to drop the gloves when the occasion calls for. And those things are all things that work in your factor. You know, Will Cooley is somebody that, you know, I think certainly his upside is easily top nine. But as I've mentioned in the past, usually with a prospect, I don't like the idea of them starting on the fourth line. But with Will Cooley and even Brennan Offman, they're both physical enough. They could, 
if they make the Rangers, either one of them, I'm okay with them starting on the fourth line because they play a physical enough style that they would uh, fit right in there. And then as time goes on and they continue to evolve and get better, uh, you can let them naturally work their way up the depth chart into the top nine, maybe even the top six, never say never uh, when it comes to that. But we're going to keep everything rolling in just a second. We're going to turn our attention to the practice that just concluded on Tuesday morning. Going to be talking about uh, the roster. We, we've got a, a practice roster that I'm going to show on screen for those of you uh, watching on YouTube and continue to just talk about everything going on in practice, as well as take a quick look at the matchup between the Rangers and Islanders. We'll do all that in just a second. But first, got to let everybody know, today's episode of Locked on New York Rangers is brought to you by DoorDash. Missing the syrup for your pancakes or just ran out of your favorite coffee creamer? With DoorDash grocery delivery, you can get what you want, when you want, right when you need it. You've trusted DoorDash to deliver your restaurant favorites, and now you can get grocery delivery that actually delivers too. With thousands of grocery stores to choose from, you'll find the best in your neighborhood and boost your local economy with each and every order. You'll get exactly what you ordered, or we will make it right. So sit back and enjoy quality groceries just like you picked them yourself. Want even more value? You can save on all your grocery and restaurant favorites with a $0 delivery fee on all eligible orders with a DoorDash membership. Get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to a $20 value when you use code LOCKED at checkout. Limited time only. Terms apply. That's 50% off up to $20, no minimum subtitle subtotal, and zero delivery fees on your first order. When you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code LOCKED. Don't forget, that's code LOCKED for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. All right, we just want to go ahead and thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And for the everydayers, you guys are definitely going to want to stick around. Obviously, the Rangers play a little bit later tonight against the Islanders. So certainly we're going to be talking about that and probably some other things as well in our next episode of Locked on New York Rangers. Uh, for right now, though, I want to go ahead and uh, share the roster from practice earlier today, Tuesday morning, uh, that was posted on Twitter. And we'll go ahead and do that right now. And uh, there's the roster for anybody uh, watching on YouTube and for anybody not watching on YouTube, I mean, it's pretty much what you would expect. Um, most of the players that were on the ice against the Bruins the other night uh, in, in the preseason opener, they're not going to be playing in tonight's game. Uh, I'm not sure if there's anybody that's going to be playing in both games, but as far as players in practice, you've got guys like uh, Lafreniere is there, VZ's there, um, Will Cooley is there, Philip Heedle is there, uh, Ben Harper, Zach Jones, guys that um, you know, for the most part, we're out there on the ice uh, for the preseason opener. And then basically anybody that didn't play in that game or most of the people that did not play against the Bruins. Yeah, they'll be in action uh, later tonight against the New York Islanders. So that's the uh, the roster right there. We'll go ahead and uh, remove that if I can figure out how to do this. There we go. So, um, yeah, definitely looking forward to the game tonight. And uh, obviously Rangers are Playing a rival team, I, you know, I realize that it is the preseason, but there's always that little flavor anytime it's Rangers and Islanders, and um, it's never too early to kind of, uh, you know, reignite that rivalry a little bit. I, I, we did our top five episode on biggest Ranger rivals a little bit earlier this offseason. I had the Islanders only at number five. There's people that will tell me they're always number one. They always will be number one. To me, that hasn't been as electric of a rivalry as some other Ranger teams that they've faced in recent years. But you never know. You always do feel like it's a little bit of a powder keg waiting to go off. And who knows? Maybe that starts tonight uh, in this preseason game. But regardless of what happens, uh, we'll be back here to talk about it in the next one. As for Tuesday's practice, um, so everybody that practiced today was out there from 930 to 1145. And, you know... I do have to call this out because this goes back to something I talked about in the most recent episode. The Rangers on their social media pages have been making like a lot of mistakes. Like Adam Sakura's name was spelled wrong. Uh, we had Capo Caco listed as Caco Capo. And we now, I don't know how many people noticed this when I had the roster on screen for those of you that are watching on YouTube, but we had Riley Nash and Carl Henriksen listed as defensemen. The last time I checked Riley, Riley Nash and Carl Henriksen are not defensemen. It's getting comical at this point. And I didn't even realize this the other night. 
But when the Rangers were playing the Bruins, they had Jonathan Quick's career stats on the screen. And apparently they had his save percentage for his career listed at 99%. Now I realize Jonathan Quick's a heck of a goalie. has had an amazing career. Three-time Stanley Cup champion, Vesna winner, all-star. You name it, he's done it. I think even Jonathan Quick would probably tell you, yeah, there's no way I've stopped 99% of the shots that I've faced uh, throughout my career. So look, it's the preseason and people make mistakes. I don't want to pile on too much, but... You know, come on, you're working for the Rangers here. This is the New York Rangers, an original six team, a team with all this history. Have a little bit of pride in your work. I don't know, maybe proofread it real quick before you hit the tweet button. Just an idea. Um, so I got that off my chest. As far as, uh, you know, other things that were going on on Tuesday, I think the first thing you got to start with is certainly the injuries. Uh, we talked about Othman and Mika. Uh, the two of them were back out there uh, at practice but they are both listed as day-to-day, and it sounds like Mika Zibanejad not going to be playing in this game tonight. Uh, He was originally slated to do so, but it goes back to what I was talking about. Uh, The Rangers obviously erring on the side of caution with players that are injured. But now, after uh, the session on Tuesday, we also know Philip Hedl is dealing with an upper body injury, and Artemi Panarin is dealing with a lower body injury, uh, the only two injuries that exist in hockey, apparently. Uh, Hedl left the practice early, and Panarin did not practice at all today and will not play in the game tonight. Uh, they're still calling them day-to-day. And this is what Peter Laviolette had to say about, you know, these injuries. We're hoping it's day-to-day. Just in general with exhibition games, I think you want to just err on the side of caution and keep guys healthy. And I totally agree with that. I'm not ready to panic yet as far as, you know, these, these injuries kind of piling up early because... Like I said, it's probably a case where they're just being very cautious. There's no reason, uh, especially for the established NHL players and guys that have like been all-stars like Panarin and Zibanejad, there's no reason to push them in practice if they're dealing with any kind of an injury, if there's any chance of making it worse um, or, you know, them hurting something else because they're favoring, you know, an arm or a leg or whatever it might be. Um, So I'm not ready to panic just yet, but these practices, by all accounts, the people attending them, you know, the, the reporters there are there and everything, they are certainly uh, more intense and just faster pace than some practices we've seen from the Rangers in previous seasons. So I, I do hope and I, I do think that this is probably true, that Laviolette and the coaching staff, yeah, they push these guys hard, but they also know when to reel it in a little bit. We don't want injuries piling up before we even get through the preseason here. And like I said, all these injuries are very minor. So I get the feeling, again, that they're just being cautious with these things it's probably not any reason to get, um, you know, concerned or, or panic or anything like that. But it is something that, you know, once they start to pile up a little bit like this, we got Offman, we got Mika, we got Hedl, we've got Panarin. Yeah, your eyebrows start to go up at least a little bit. So um, hopefully, you know, this is uh, not a sign of things to come. The Rangers have been a remarkably healthy team in recent seasons. And obviously, uh, we hope that that continues going forward. I figure, I mean, that's pretty much it as far as practice here today. There weren't as many details about today's practice available as there have been on some other days uh, as far as, you know, the reporters that are there. And, you know, I'm kind of at the mercy of uh, things that get posted on Twitter and on social media because I'm not at these practices, at least not yet. Uh, We'll see about future seasons maybe getting there. Um, But, yeah, for for the time being, I'm just kind of going by, you know, what's being written, what's being posted on social media. And um, sounds like it was another good practice. But, yeah, the injuries are kind of the big talking point uh, coming out of said practice. Uh, In just a second, I want to turn our attention to the game that's going to be happening later tonight, 7 p.m. puck drop, Rangers with their preseason home opener at the Garden, playing host to the rival New York Islanders. Going to be talking about that matchup uh, in just a second. All right, so Rangers, Islanders. Uh, One thing that I wanted to do, now that we have kind of an idea of Who's going to be on the ice for the New York Rangers? We at least have a general sense of who's going to be out there and who's probably not going to be out there. Uh, I figure we might as well go ahead, turn our attention to the Islanders and kind of uh, look at which of their players are going to be playing. And there were, you know, their beat writers are basically doing the same thing that the Ranger beat writers are doing. Uh, They're at the practice and, you know, whichever players are out there at practice, the the good bet seems to be uh, that those will not be the ones playing in the game tonight. The players that are not practicing, they'll be more likely to be in the game. So with that said, uh, there was... You know, a list of players that the Islander beat writers seem to believe will be active tonight. Uh, one of them, we know him r- right off the bat here, is Semyon Varlamov, who has been something of a Ranger killer over the years. I feel like the Rangers have done a little bit better against him in recent history, and that probably also has something to do with the fact that the Rangers have gotten quite a bit better over the past two seasons. But Varlamov is somebody that has had the Rangers number uh, at least at times over the years, but he's going to be one of the goalies. I uh, figure maybe he plays half the game. I, I don't know what the Islanders' plans are, but um, that seems to be the way that teams do this uh, early in the preseason. You'll have two goalies sharing duties 
um, you know, early in the preseason. Then maybe later in the preseason, uh, you see certain goalies play the entire game. As far as defensemen, I mean, you got Aho, you've got Boldu, who was uh, a pretty big prospect not too many years ago here. Um, Mayfield, uh, you've got Ryan Pulak. He's going to be out there. I'm kind of just throwing out names that people are going to recognize and be familiar with. As far as forwards, uh, Cal Clutterbuck is going to be there. You've got Johnston. You've got Ander Anders Lee. Uh, Brock Nelson, Jay Pajot. So, yeah, I mean, they they do have some of their regulars out there, but um, I, I do feel like the Rangers have at least a couple of more regulars than do the Islanders. And that being the case, I'm hoping for and expecting a Ranger win tonight. And I, I realize the Rangers are going to be down Panarin and Mika, but even with that being the case, it does feel like the Rangers uh, have more regulars out there than the Islanders. And of course, the Rangers are going to have Igor Shesterkin uh, in net for presumably half the game. Looks like he'll be splitting it with Dylan Garand after we saw Deming and Quick in the first game. Um, but anytime Igor's out there, you know, I'll take my chances with the Rangers. He's always, you know, an X factor. And uh, there's not a team in this league that I would look at them and say, oh, yeah, their goalie is definitely better than ours. No, Igor's in the mix for, for best goalie in the world. And um, hopefully the Rangers get a win tonight. Like I said, it's preseason. So if they lose, Am I going to panic and oh, cancel the season? Oh, this, this is a disaster. This is never going to work. No, it's not going to be anything like that. But, hey, I don't want to see the Rangers go 0-6 this preseason. And I'm sure you guys don't want to see that either. I don't think anybody's going to feel good about that. So you are playing the Islanders. It's a form of Rangers-Islanders. I'm hoping that you know, some of the young guys, some of the prospects that are going to be out there, they're going to be hungry and they're going to be working hard and uh, hopefully leading the Rangers to a win. Let's at least get a goal, right? You know, the... Rangers didn't have any puck luck against the Bruins, hit the posts at least three times, uh, came close to scoring a goal on several occasions, got goalied. Uh, Johnny Brodzinski was absolutely robbed by the Bruins netminder. But uh, regardless, let's, let's put a puck in the net at least once or twice tonight. How about that? Um, as far as other things to keep an eye on here, you know, I think for sure um, you got you to gotta, you gotta probably take a look at the newest players on the New York Rangers. Uh, Eric Gustafson certainly being one of them. If we assume that he plays in this game here tonight, as we've been talking about him versus Jones, that's going to be a very intriguing position battle to keep track of as the season or as the preseason progresses here. And I thought Zach Jones had a really nice game for the Rangers. Uh, he was one of the standouts for the Rangers in their game against the Bruins. Uh, just really seems to see the ice well. Did a nice job quarterbacking the top power play unit. Made some really good passes. Made some smart decisions with the puck. He even delivered a hit. And granted, he kind of got run over a little bit and seemed to get the worst of it, but at least he was willing to, you know, stick his nose in there. So overall, I thought Jones looked good. And now it's Gustafson's turn. And you got to figure he's going to be out there in this game tonight. I feel like as far as that position battle is concerned, Gustafson might have a little bit of the inside track as far as, you know, if they play about the same throughout this preseason, it might go to Gustafson by default, you know, bringing him in, his familiarity with LaViolette. I feel like the idea is for him to play and, and to play often, but you know, the battle's on between Gustafson and Jones. So I think Gustafson's somebody that, you know, if he wants to make sure he's out there on opening night, he could use a good game uh, against the Islanders here tonight. Uh, somebody else I'm going to be watching is definitely Dylan Garand. Uh, he played very well. Uh, he's basically had a stretch of good hockey going all the way back to the Calder playoffs last season. You know, he was one of the biggest reasons why the Wolfpack made it as far as they did uh, to the round of eight. And then, of course, they lost, but he played very well throughout their playoff run after, you know, a so-so regular season, his, his first season of pro hockey. Uh, he also played very well in the first of the two rookie series games against the Flyers. He made some outstanding saves. I thought he was the best player uh, on the ice for either team. I want to say the Rangers won that game 3-1, to one, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, he was fantastic. But yeah, Grand, you know, he's probably going to be splitting time with Louis Domingue with the Hartford Wolfpack. But I'm hoping that... Grand kind of wins that battle and becomes the guy for the Hartford Wolfpack and gets to play a lot of games this season. Maybe he gets at least two thirds of the starts to one third for Louis Domingue. That's kind of my hope because, you know, Grand is a Ranger draft pick. And I, I do think it's possible we see him as the backup to Igor Shesterkin as soon as next season. Uh, we shall see how that all shakes out. Other thing I'm going to be keeping an eye on, we all keep an eye on this the line combinations. Going to be very, very interesting in this game because, first of all, you know, preseason, you never have or you usually don't have the entire. Uh, opening night roster on the ice at the same time. And that's even more true tonight uh, with Panarin and with Mika being out of the lineup. They're not going to play. And look, I don't want anybody to get hurt, especially not players of their caliber. But I'm wondering if maybe this is a little bit of a blessing in disguise for the Rangers, just because you, know, you take Mika and Panarin off the ice in a preseason game, that opens up the door for other players to go out there Get more ice time. Maybe somebody, one or two players is, is playing in the top six where otherwise they might not have. Maybe one or two players now get to play on the top power play unit, whereas otherwise they might not have. So you've got a lot of guys that, you know, 
trying to stake their claim to a roster spot, or you know, maybe there's guys that probably aren't going to make the roster, but they can still improve their standing within the organization uh, with a strong showing in these preseason games. So it does open up the door for some opportunity, and we know what we're getting with Panarin and Mika Zibanejad. These guys are well-established players, all-star caliber players, uh, just fantastic players. And yeah, I mean, I, it, there, there's nothing that like we're going to find out about them if they play in these preseason games. But when it comes to some of the younger players, the less established players, the guys fighting for a prominent spot in the lineup, they have a lot to play for uh, in the preseason. So like I said, maybe in a roundabout way, in a weird way, a little bit of a blessing in disguise that Panarin and Mika sit this one out. But uh, I do hope certainly they get to play in at least a couple of the preseason games. You don't want them going into the regular season ice cold. Uh, I think, you know, two preseason games at a minimum would be ideal for both Panarin and Mika Zibanejad. Uh, obviously, uh, this one, you know, it, it's kind of common sense, but I feel like I should say it anyway, based on what we've seen in practice, we want to see the Rangers stay healthy in this game. Um, you know, there, there's been some minor injuries throughout the practices so far here. And, uh, I, I think we can all agree on that. that. That's one thing that's really important throughout the training camp, throughout the, all the practices and, and the preseason games and whatnot. Uh, we need this team to stay healthy and be at full strength for the start of the season. Anytime anybody gets injured, whether it's the Rangers or any other team, you know, it is kind of funny how you look at it and you say, man, we can't afford to lose this guy. We can't afford to lose that guy. Basically, anybody who gets injured, it feels like, you know, it's a pretty significant blow because hockey more so than any other sport, you're relying on every player on your roster. You know, the, the 20 guys that dress for any given game, everybody except the backup goalie is going to play. And you need everybody playing well and firing on all cylinders if uh, you want to be a championship team. So, yeah, I mean, I figure we could pretty much leave it there. Definitely looking forward to seeing the Rangers back in action against the Islanders tonight. I know I'm not alone there. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and come back and talk about it on the next episode of Locked on New York Rangers. I also want to thank you guys uh, quite a bit for subscribing to the Locked on New York Rangers YouTube channel. We've seen uh, some good traffic there and, um, you know, a lot more subscribers. The subscriber number seems to be uh, jumping pretty significantly almost every day. We're over 2000 at this point. And if you haven't subscribed, uh, please think about doing so. As I mentioned in the past, uh, most episodes, nine out of 10 times, I would say, the episode, whatever episode you're listening to or watching, it will be on YouTube before it's available on uh, audio services. So you'll want to subscribe for that reason. And also we do occasionally um, have some YouTube only bonus material that I'll throw on that channel as well. We're going to be live streaming the fantasy draft, which is slated for, uh, let's see, Sunday, October 8th at 8 p.m. Definitely looking forward to that as well. So again, thank you guys for subscribing to that. Really does mean a lot. Figure we can call it there. If you'd like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well, at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that is at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely subscribe again to the Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you next time.